I'm Professor Angelique Chetiparam, and I'm from the Department of Real Estate and Planning at the University of Reading in UK. The topic of my lecture today is In My Backyard, Waste and Energy in a Circular Economy. I'm going to talk about the pressing and immediate issue of solid waste management in the Global South. I will then present the general situation in Cochin, which is a city in India, in the state of Kerala, as it was in 2007. I will briefly then introduce the concept of the waste hierarchy and then go to, on to discuss conventional models of solid waste management and its problems for the cities in the Global South. Then I will introduce the uh, case study of, the, of one ward in the city of Cochin, which is the ward of Pachalam. And from this ward, I will draw um, an alternate model of solid waste management. Okay, waste management starts with the issue of storage, of course. And in most global situations and most global cities in the global south, this waste storage is limited. The consequence then, of course, is that waste ends up in public spaces. And when waste ends up in public spaces, there is damage to the city environment and we can get clogged drains, which in turn can cause flooding. Waste segregation is also tends to limited. Sorting is then required at a later stage in order to retrieve recyclables from waste. This makes the whole operation of sorting quite expensive and the recyclable re recovered may not also command the same value. It is also not healthy for either the marginalized sections of the population who are engaged in, in waste. The primary collection points are points where households bring the waste and from which the city collects waste. These often tend to be concrete rings or metallic rings. The consequence of that is that the waste ends up being on the ground. When waste ends up on the ground, it requires manual handling. An overflowing waste, of course, attracts cattle, rats and stray dogs. Primary transportation of waste is the transportation of waste from the primary collection points to either disposal sites or to transfer stations. The way in which this transportation occurs also requires manual handling of waste. And this, of course, is not hygienic either for the workers or for the city population. At the transfer stations, what we get is waste needs to be dumped either on the floor or on a table, as can be seen in the photograph. This again requires manual handling of waste and it requires multiple handling of waste. Dump yards are often also sited near water locations and disposal tends to be in dump yards rather than landfill sites. What this leads to is a model of waste management which are termed as a whirlpool model of waste management. What we get here is segregation happening at household level, primary collection happening at neighborhood level, secondary collection happening at city level and disposal is either at city or regional level. It is a model that is linear through scale in that different management functions within the solid waste management system happen at different scales. So what are the problems with this model then? The first problem, of course, is that of user engagement. The literature tells us that it is very difficult to sustain user engagement in things like recycling activities, waste segregation and so on. In urban context, space is also a problem in that it is difficult to find locations where a landfill site can be sited. Because we have more dump yards than land, proper landfill sites, which are environmentally um, sustainable, we also end up with a loss of energy recovery opportunities. For instance, in India, the dump yards are the third largest contributor to global warming. And it also produces around 50 to 60% of methane that India produces. 
The model of waste management also tends to accumulate waste from different households to neighborhood level and from neighborhood levels to the city level. And there are really no economies of scale in waste management. Waste, when it is accumulated, only becomes unstable. Let's now go to the case of the city of Cochin. So what was happening in 2007? From the city data, we could see that waste storage at source was almost negligent. So was also waste segregation at source. So it was only practiced in one middle class ward in the city. Primary collection points were collecting around 40 to 45 percent of, of waste. And from these collection points, only 50 percent of the waste was transported. The efficiency of trucks in the transportation was also low because of the manual handling of waste required. It could only do two trips per, per truck. The city had acquired a 15 and a half hectare um, site and there was a proposal then to establish a 200 ton centralized windrow composting plant as well as 50 ton day per day wormy composting plant. However, the waste generation even at that time was around 400 tons per day. The above situation is not unique to Cochin. What can the solution to this state of affairs then be? Before I go into that, let's just discuss the waste hierarchy. The waste hierarchy was suggested by the European Framework Directive for Waste Management in 1975. What the hierarchy suggests is that as much as possible, waste must be reduced. And if waste cannot, the waste that cannot be reduced must be reused as much as possible in its original form. Later, if it can't be reduced or reused, it, the waste must be recycled into other substances. Finally, material and energy must be recovered as much as possible and only the residue must be disposed of. Reduce, reuse and recycle options are normally better developed in the Global South. However, recovery and disposal options are really underdeveloped generally. For instance, incineration is a non-starter, mainly because the, of the nature of the waste that is generated in the Global South. It tends to be wet waste. However, because of this, composting and biogas options are now emerging as viable solutions. Let's go now to the Pachalam board in the city of Cochin. Waste management here started with a public awareness campaign. The awareness campaign was targeted to uh, enable waste reduction and waste segregation and also to come to a preferred waste strategy for the ward. Waste was segregated at source and wet waste was disposed through biogas plants at household level wherever possible. So for those without, a bio, without the possibility of installing a biogas plant at the household level, a collection system was introduced on a monthly payment basis. So waste would then be collected from green baskets that was left outside the compound every day. Recyclables was collected by a team of rag pickers and any residual uh, recyclables uh, that would find its way to the green buckets kept outside would be retrieved by the collection group. The waste that is collected by the collection group was taken to a neighborhood biogas plant that was placed at the market. Household slurry was of course disposed in household gardens and there were schemes to promote medicinal gardens as well as um, kitchen gardens. There was also plans to um, develop street planting uh, with collaboration from the forest department. What we see here now is two models of biogas plants that were installed at the household level. One is largely underground and while as the other is largely overground. These biogas plants produce around two and a half hours of cooking gas 
per day, which is generally sufficient for a household. What the model suggests is what I've termed as the fractal model of waste management. It's an alternate model of solid waste management. What is different here is that all of the uh, processes in the waste hierarchy from reduce to disposal happens at every scale of waste management. The process repeats at every scale. So let's look at this uh, idea a little bit more in detail. At household level, we have waste generation. So we have reduction of waste as well as reuse of waste. And this is achieved through community mobilization and awareness creation. Waste is also stored in buckets in household level where there is no participation in household uh, biogas plant. Recyclables are collected by the rag pickers. Energy is recovered through the biogas and material is recovered in the form of slurry. Any residual waste is handed to rag pickers or the waste collectors. So what happens at the neighborhood level? Streets and public spaces generate waste at the neighborhood level and so do the collection schemes where there is no household level biogas plant. We have segregation and recycling practice by the rack, the collection team that collect the waste who recover any residual waste from the collected waste. The waste is taken to the biogas plant, of course, at the neighborhood level, at the market, and there we have gas and slurry recovery. And any residual waste alone is taken to the city level. At the city level, we do not have uh, an extension of this model yet, but if we extrapolate, we can say that waste generation here would be from uh, major roads and public spaces. Segregation could be through appointed rack pickers and recovery could be through a biogas plant that could be situated at the existing landfill site with reuse for urban agriculture or urban greening projects. The space required to dispose waste would then be much smaller and the existing landfill, landfill site could suffice. Why should this model be more desirable then? The first advantage is that inherently the model is more stable because any failure can only be a local failure in this instance. So if a biogas plant fails, it will be only a very local failure. The system is also easily manageable at each level because only very little waste is entering into that level, unlike the previous whirlpool model where waste is accumulated. It is also resource efficient because with the, all elements of the waste hierarchy are exercised at all scales. This results in almost complete resource recovery. The system is also financially viable because when waste enters into the public domain through the collection system, for instance, there is a user charge attached to it. And the user charge is publicly accepted through the consultation process. It is also people sensitive as people, um, individual preferences of people for either a household biogas plant or a collection system is respected. It is operationally sustainable as the benefits of the system actually reaches the generator of the waste in term, in, as either slurry or biogas that can be used for cooking. It is also environmentally sustainable as waste is treated almost simultaneously with its production. Thank you.